you know, I do have a gym in my house. I work with weights. Uh, I down those season usually about once a week, though. Maybe, you know, preseason a couple times a week because in motorcycles, you don't want to get too strong and big because what happens is your endurance goes away and then actually you, you begin to get a little more awkward on the bike. It's, it's hard to flow real smooth with the bike. So, um, you know, in that situation, uh, like I said, you spend a lot of time on your motorcycle. Summertime, I pick up swimming a little bit, something new, you know. It's not so mind-boggling to always do the same kind of training. I try to be innovative and uh, think of something new to keep my mind fresh. I've been racing 10 years, and it's uh, something to me it's important to have a good mental outlook on the thing. Barring any kind of uh, major injury, how long do you think a career can last in this sport? It's really hard to say. I've signed a three-year contract with Yamaha right now. It's the beginning of the three-year uh, for this year, so I have three more years of solid racing for him, and uh, after that, if I feel like racing anymore, I will, and if I don't, hopefully I'll be able to retire and uh, be secure enough I can do that. So, talk of retirement by one of the relative senior citizens in this sport, if you can be a senior citizen at age 26. But right now, all Brock Glover is thinking about is the running down the man right in front of him, and that is Jeff Ward, Steve Evans. And Glover is not the only one, Brock, who has taken to cycling. Jeff Ward uh, is so intense a cycler now that he just won his first race from the international border not far south of here to uh, Ensenada in Mexico. He was first place. Well, it's hard to believe that anything that's powered by a motor can be so difficult and so grueling to ride, but you're seeing it right here. These guys absolutely have no rest. And back to the misadventures of poor Scott Manning. He has now fallen back into a battle for 10th with Jim Tarantino and Robert Laughlin. As we said earlier, I think that that bike of his is just offering a lot of problems for him, Steve. He just doesn't have as much power as he did. No, he doesn't. And there is Tarantino, number 47, uh, taking over that 10th position from Manning. So, Scott Manning has his, continues to have his woes here at Carlsbad. And started, oh, look at that, almost dropped it there. Got it sideways in that little soft spot in that corner. So, there is Manning falling back to 11th. Jim Tarantino up in the 10th spot. And when the bike's not running right, it can be even harder to ride because uh, you press your abilities trying to make up for that loss of horsepower. Yep, you can see Manning has really, really slowed up substantially as Tarantino now drives away from him. And I'm sure he is about to be challenged even further as he fights to hold on to his position. There are the leaders. That is Jeff Ward, and he's got some traffic in front of him going wide to uh, avoid any possible contact. And here also comes number four, Brock Glover, who'll have to contend with those same left riders. And there he goes, through, right by Tim Winslow, Steve, who moved over and waved Glover past. A really sportsmanlike gesture because some of these slower but riders can really hold up some of the quick guys. Well, Winslow's got to wish he could stay closer to Brock Glover, maybe get a riding lesson. Yeah, well, he's on his way to learning. You can be sure of that, and he's sure starting out right by treating the faster traffic that way. All right, that is your leader right there, Jeff Ward, still being followed by Brock Glover. Ward has pulled out a little bit, and I don't think it was the fault of that slower traffic. There goes Glover, up shifting, see a little wheel stand there as he heads right over the Devil's Drop. Oh, there he comes. That's what they come to watch, those flights through the air by these men and their flying machines. I think the most impressive riding performance I've ever seen was a few years ago when Brock Glover won both days of the stadium event of the L.A. Coliseum. I mean, they said it couldn't be done and has not been done since. He is surely brilliant, but right now, Jeff Ward has really got him covered. Ward is just uh, running away from Brock Glover right now, and you can see how hard Glover is riding and doing a beautiful job. Notice, Steve, that the bike stays pretty much upright. It, it doesn't slide. He's not putting a lot of opposite lock on the wheel. It's just a very clean, straight-ahead motion. And there goes Jeff Ward out in front. Maybe Glover's gathered up a couple of feet on him. It looks like Ward muscles his bike around a little more than Glover does, using that tremendous upper body strength that he's got. And how about this? This is the battle for fourth, but it's Billy Frank now in fourth with George Holland chasing him instead of the other way around. Yeah, George falling back a spot, exchanged that position with Billy Frank, who, remember, has been battling hard all the way through. He's had his, uh, his share of adventures today, but right now he's got kind of a clean shot. Uh, George Holland's falling back a little bit and doesn't seem to be able to challenge quite as much as he was. But notice that Billy Frank rides that high road way around there, and George Holland took it low, trying to nip underneath him. As they accelerate up through the gears and down the Carlsbad Freeway, the fastest part of this track. And the track also, Brock, is starting to dry out a little bit. It maybe doesn't have the grip it had earlier, and you got to do things a bit differently. The riders ought to be constantly watching that as well. Well, George Holland once again tries Billy Frank underneath and doesn't make it 
right stick as that terrific battle continues with a four spot. Remember now, Ricky Johnson is kind of driven away from this pair, and he's riding alone in third, while Glover and Ward fight it out for number one. Now this year in the stadium Supercross, as people are familiar with, the rules require production motorcycles. Not so in these outdoor CMC races. It's run what you run for the factory engineers. This is still their laboratory to build better production bikes. So you got some trick machines out there, including those of Billy Frank and George Holland. All right, the ninth lap coming up. Only three more remaining. Up on the pegs, your leader, Jeff Ward, about to jump the devil's drop, holding on against Brock Glover, and right behind him, Ricky Johnson, three of the greatest motocross riders in the history of the sport going at it here, Steve. Well, when Ricky Johnson started racing, this man, Brock Glover, was his hero. Now it's Johnson just behind him trying to cut the pins out from under Glover. And look at this. That's Ricky Johnson rough riding that motorcycle around in pursuit of Brock Glover. He is just going sideways. All of, you talk, we talked about Glover really being some, so smooth, Steve. Look at Johnson. Looks like he's on a brum of bull. Kind of total abandon. You know, and to consider he was as far back as seventh spot and is now breathing right down the neck. Brock Glover, not an easy thing to do. It sure isn't. You're not just going against some patsy. You're going against one of the best riders ever. Look at this. Johnson on the five bike. Brock Glover on the four bike. Heading up toward the top of the hill here. Right now, Jeff Ward still got a little bit of a lead. Look at this. Johnson on the outside trying to pass a hard way. Will he make it stick? He got the inside line going down the freeway, Steve. As soon as he had enough width on the racetrack, he just blew right by Glover. And I guarantee you that will irritate the golden boy. Uh, they may be from the same part of the country, but they are just arch rivals. Well, right now, Ricky Johnson has said goodbye to Brock Glover. He said, so long, I'm going after another guy. That's in my name, Jeff Ward, right there in the right side of your screen, who still holds the lead, but not by much. Boy, this has got to throw Roger DeCoster, the many-time world champion, who coordinates and manages the Honda motocross team. He said, I picked the right young boy this time. Oh, boy, did he just. There he comes. Johnson was the youngest pro ever licensed by CMC at 13 years of age. His first big race was second in, of all places, Tahiti, and that was a few years back, but look at him now. Oh, boy. Well, right now, it's Jeff Ward who's got to feel the pressure. His crew has probably told him he's got a serious player right behind him, and Ricky Johnson moves up on him. Oh, look at this, and traffic coming up. Let's see what happens with that slower traffic in the way. Ward is behind the traffic, can't get by. Johnson sneaks up on the end. Johnson leads this first 250 moto. What a job this young boy has done. Incredible. Moving away now from Ward. Moving away from Glover. Driving out towards victory. Look at that. Maybe a 50-yard lead right now on the man who's dominated this race, Jeff Ward. And a young man many people say is the best in the business, Steve. So Ricky Johnson, though, on his home track, is showing the way home in the most convincing of fashion. Johnson himself has traffic in front of him. Let's see how he handles it. Up on the berm there, the high groove, kind of rim riding us in a sprint car down the hill, past slower traffic, putting slower traffic between him and Jeff Ward. More insurance, really. And those lap riders, they look over their shoulder. They know who number five is, and they're getting out of the way. A lot of sportsmanship out here. They don't want to ruin a good race either. Look at that. Using his foot a lot more than Ward is using. Just flying that bike. Down toward the checkered flag. Johnson. They'll all go to the pitch, refuel. The mechanics will tune them up, maybe put on some new tires. Now, here was the pass that made it happen for Ricky Johnson. Jeff Ward was at the wrong place, brought behind the rider about to be left. That is Brett Redman there on the bike in front. You can see Johnson on the inside, and there is Jeff Ward trying to take the outside line, and it doesn't pay off for him. There goes Ricky Johnson by to take the lead. He never gave up. And at this point, Jeff Ward saying to himself, well, I just can't let Glover buy two, and he didn't. A very complex scoring system used here today. First place receives 41 points. Of course, that's Ricky Johnson. 38 points will go to Jeff Ward, 36 points to Brock Glover, and so on down the line. Now, the same scoring will be used in the second moto. However, if there's a tie, it's your position, your finish in the second 